Hi, this is Andy, KE4GKP, and welcome back to the Hand Whisper and Lesson 16 of the Technician Operator Element 2 exam preparation course. Today we'll be covering the T5B questions, which is math for electronics. All right, the T5B section questions cover decibels and electrical units and the metric system. And I think it's important to note that you are allowed to take a calculator to the exam. Uh, the whoever the volunteer examiner may ask you to erase the memory so you haven't stored any formulas you're supposed to memorize for the exam. However, the calculator is key and I would recommend getting a good one. Alright, with that said, let's get going. How many milliamperes is 1.5 amperes? Now here's where we get into metric conversions. And what the metric system does and the different prefixes in the metric system, it lets you deal with really big numbers and really small numbers that you often find in electronics. Now the prefix milli in the metric system is, is the important part of milliamperes. The milli indicates that it is one one-thousandth of an ampere. So there are a thousand milliamperes in an ampere. Alright, so to find the answer, what you have to do is you have to multiply 1,000 by 1 1.5 to get 1,500 milliamperes, which is the answer. So what I'll do is I'll provide a link to the metric conversion chart on uh, hamwhisper.com and I will point out the conversions you need to memorize for the exam to make things a little bit easier. But just remember the prefix in the metric conversion um, determines the, the size of that unit. What is another way to specify a radio signal frequency of 1,500,000 Hertz? Now the correct answer on the exam is 1,500 kilohertz. And the problem is with this question is you have to sort through all the possible answers to find the correct one, which means you need to know how to convert hertz to kilohertz, megahertz, and gigahertz. Now, if these prefixes sound familiar to you, you've probably been shopping for memory for your computer, like for a flash drive or a hard disk or something along those lines. And memory comes in bytes, kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, etc., and it's all the same idea. Now, to convert hertz to kilohertz, you need to know that one kilohertz is equal to 1,000 hertz. Now, if you divide 1,000 into 1,500,000, you get 1,500 kilohertz, which is the correct answer. Now, remember, if you're going to a bigger metric unit, you divide. If you're going to a smaller metric unit, like kilohertz to hertz, you multiply. So if we reverse this problem, when to find out how many hertz is in a kilohertz, you multiply 1,000 by 1,500 kilohertz, and you get 1,500,000 hertz. How many volts are equal to one kilovolt? Now this is a pretty easy question. Um, we're going from kilovolts to volts. And if you know that kilo is a thousand of anything in the metric system, so a kilovolt is equal to a thousand volts. No problem. How many volts are equal to one microvolt? Now this time we're looking for microvolts, which are smaller than volts. Uh, a microvolt is equal to one one millionth of a volt. So it's a pretty small number. So the answer is one one millionth of a volt. Which of the following is equivalent to 500 milliwatts? Now on the exam all the possible answers are in watts. So what you need to do is you need to find the watts from milliwatts and you need to know that a milliwatt is equal to one one thousandth of a watt. So there are a thousand milliwatts in a watt. So 500 milliwatts can be also be written as 500 over a thousand watts. If you do the math and divide 500 by 1,000, you get 0 0.5 watts. If an ammeter calibrated in amperes is used to measure a 3,000 milliampere current, what reading would it show? All right, now an ampere is a device which measures amperes or current, um, actually. But this one in particular is calibrated in amperes, so we're looking for amperes as the answer. Now, from the last question, we know that a milliampere is equal to one one thousandth of an ampere. So there are a thousand milliamperes in an amp. So we can rewrite three thousand milliamperes as three thousand over one thousand amperes. Now, if you divide three thousand by one thousand, you get three amperes, and that's the answer on the exam. If a frequency readout calibrated in megahertz shows a reading of three point five two five megahertz, what would it show if it were calibrated in kilohertz? Now this one is a little bit trickier. What you're looking for is how many kilohertz go into a megahertz. And for this one you need to know that one megahertz is equal to one million hertz. And a kilohertz is equal to one thousand hertz. So we can rewrite 3.525 megahertz as three million five hundred twenty five thousand hertz. And knowing that a kilohertz is a thousand hertz, you can divide three million five hundred twenty five thousand by a thousand 
and the kilohertz you get is 3,525 kilohertz. How many microfarads are 1 million picofarads? Now, remember from a previous question that a micro anything, uh, or a microfarad in this case, is equal to 1 1 millionth of a farad. And a picofarad is even smaller. It is 1 1 trillionth of a farad. And since we are trying to find how many smaller units go into a larger unit, we divide one one millionth far odds by one one trillionth far odds, and we get one one millionth far odds, or one microfarad. Now, if you remember how to multiply and divide powers of 10, this, this type of question gets a lot easier. But just remember that you got to memorize micro, pico, and then you have to do the math. What is the approximate amount of change measured in decibels of a power increase from 5 watts to 10 watts. Now what a bell is, it kind of shows a relationship between a starting point and an end point in describing the amount of change. And uh, bells are used to measure different intensities of volume, signal strengths, power, stuff like that. Now the standard unit of uh, measurement that we use commonly for of the bell is the decibel. And a decibel is one tenth of a bell. So for this question, here's the formula you need to memorize. A decibel is equal to 10 times the log of P1 divided by P0, where P0 is the reference power, or the power we're starting out at, and P1 is the power level compared to the reference power, so the power we're ending up at and we're comparing the two, or the change in the two. Now since we are starting at 5 watts, that's the reference power, or P0, and 10 is the new power level, or P1, and we're comparing P1 to P0. So algebra time. A decibel is equal to 10 times the log of 10, which is P1, divided by 5, which is P0, or is equal to 10 times the log of 2, or if you do the log of 2, that's 10 times 0.3, which equals to 3 decibels. Now you're allowed to have a calculator, a scientific calculator for the exam, and I would practice doing logs on your calculator before you actually get there so you don't get caught off guard. What is the approximate amount of change measured in decibels of a power decrease from 12 watts to 3 watts? All right, now it's the same formula to find decibels in decreasing power. All right, and so the formula we're looking for is decibels is equal to 10 times the log of P1 divided by P0. And this time the reference power is 12, so that's the power we're starting out at. And the P1 is 3 watts, which is the power we're ending up at. And we're trying to compare the difference between the two. Now, we can rewrite this as decibels is equal to 10 times the log of 3 divided by 12, which is equal to 10 times the log of 0.25, which is equal to 10 times a negative 0.6, which is negative 6. Now, remember, what we're looking for is change. And a negative number, in this case negative 6, only means that the change went down 6 decibels. And it's kind of like distance. You know, if you drive 20 miles in one direction, and you turn around and you drive 5 miles in the other direction, the total amount of time, or total distance you've driven is 25 miles. So you kind of disregard the negative, and the answer is 6 decibels. What is the approximate amount of change measured in decibels of a power increase from 20 watts to 200 watts? So if you understand logarithms, you can do this in your head. I don't do that very well, so I use a calculator. Now we're using the same formula for this one. Decibels is equal to 10 times the log of P1 divided by P0. All right, this time the reference power, or P0, is 20 watts, and P1 is 200 watts. So the decibel, you can rewrite this as the decibel is equal to 10 times the log of 200 divided by 20, which is equal to 10 times the log of 10, which is equal to 10 times 1, which is equal to 10 decibel change. So the answer is 10 decibels change. Which of the following frequencies is equal to 28,400 kilohertz? The answer is 28.4 megahertz. And the way you get this is that you remember there's 1,000 kilohertz in 1 megahertz. So you just need to take the 28,400 kilohertz and you divide that number by 1,000. And what you get is 28.4 megahertz. So the answer is 28.4 megahertz, which is equal to 28,400 kilohertz. If a frequency readout shows a reading of 2,425 megahertz, what frequency is that in gigahertz? The answer is 2.425 gigahertz. So there are 1,000 megahertz in 1 gigahertz. So gigahertz are basically larger than megahertz. So in the same way as we went from kilohertz to megahertz, we're going to go from megahertz to gigahertz. 
So once again, you take 2,425 megahertz and divide by 1,000 and you get 2.425 gigahertz. And that's it for the review, and now it's time for the T5B quiz. Uh, so grab your paper, your pencil, and number from 1 through 13. When you're done with the quiz, be sure to stop by hamwhisper.com and check your answers. I'm going to go through the questions pretty fast as usual, so if you need more time, simply pause the video and take all the time you need. All right, let's start the quiz. Question 1. How many milliamperes is 1.5 amperes? A. 15 milliamperes. B, 150 milliamperes, C, 1500 milliamperes, or D, 15,000 milliamperes. Question 2. What is another way to specify a radio signal frequency of 1,500,000 hertz? A, 1500 kHz, B, 1500 megahertz, C, 15 gigahertz, or D, 150 kilohertz? Question 3. How many volts are equal to 1 kilovolt? A. 1 1,000th one of a volt B. 100 volts C. 1,000 volts or D. 1 million volts Question 4. How many volts are equal to 1 microvolt? A. 1 1 millionth of a volt B. 1 million volts C. 1,000 kilovolts or D. 1 1,000th one of a volt Question 5. Which of the following is equivalent to 500 milliwatts? A. 0 0.02 watts B. 0 0.5 watts C. 5 watts or D. 50 watts Question 6. If an ammeter calibrated in amperes is used to measure a 3000 milliampere current, what reading would it show? A. 0 0.003 amperes B. 0.3 amperes C, 3 amperes, or D, 3 million amperes. Question 7. If a frequency readout calibrated in megahertz shows a reading of 3.525 megahertz, what would it show if it were calibrated in kilohertz? A, 0 0.003525 kilohertz, B, 35.25 kilohertz, C, 3525 kilohertz, or D, 3,525,000 kilohertz. Question 8. How many microfarads are 1 million picofarads? A. 0 0.001 microfarads, B. 1 microfarad, C. 1,000 microfarads, or D. 1 billion microfarads. Question 9. What is the approximate amount of change measured in decibels of a power increase from 5 watts to 10 watts? A. 2 decibels B. 3 decibels C. 5 decibels or D. 10 decibels Question 10. What is the approximate amount of change measured in decibels of a power decrease from 12 watts to 3 watts? A. Negative 1 decibel B. Negative 3 decibels C. Negative 6 decibels or D. Negative 9 decibels Question 11. What is the approximate amount of change measured in decibels of a power increase from 20 watts to 200 watts? A. 10 decibels B. 12 decibels C. 18 decibels or D. 28 decibels Question 12. Which of the following frequencies is equal to 28,400 kilohertz? A. 28.4 megahertz B. 2.8 megahertz C. 284 megahertz or D 28.4 kilohertz Question 13 If a frequency readout shows a reading of 2425 megahertz what frequency is that in gigahertz A 0 0.002425 gigahertz B 24.25 gigahertz C 2.425 gigahertz or D 2,425 gigahertz. And that is it for the T5B lesson. And now that you're done with the quiz, go, be sure to go to hamwhisper.com and check your answers. You can find it at the exam answers page under the T5B link. 
And until next time in Lesson 17, this is Andy, KE4GKP, saying 73, and I hope to hear you on the air soon.